Welcome to Medicine Officials High Yield Harrison based videos. Let's learn about hemophilia in this session. At the genetic level, hemophilia is X linked recessive disease, which means males are mainly affected, while females are carriers of the disease. For learning hemophilia, let us recapitulate on the coagulation cascade. As we know, there are two pathways of the coagulation cascade the intrinsic pathway and the extrinsic pathway. In the various hemophilic disorders, factors of the intrinsic pathway are deficient. Marker of the deficiency of clotting factors of the intrinsic pathway is the activated partial thromboplastin time, that is APTT. Hence, APTT value is elevated in the hemophilic disorders. Coming to the types of hemophilia, in hemophilia A, there is deficiency of the clotting factor 8. While in hemophilia B, the factor 9 is deficient. Hemophilia C is characterized by deficiency of the clotting factor 11. Acquired hemophilia occurs due to conditions like pregnancy, connective tissue disorders like SLE and hematological malignancies. Coming to the classification of hemophilia, based on the levels of the clotting factors, hemophilia is classified into mild, moderate and severe disease. Mild hemophilia is characterized by factor levels in the range of 6 to 30 percent. Moderate hemophilia is characterized by factor levels in the range of 1 to 5 percent, while in severe hemophilia, levels of less than 5 percent are present. Symptoms of hemophilia Mild disease usually is asymptomatic. Moderate disease has clinical features like bleeding into the muscles and bleeding into joints, that is hemarthrosis. Severe disease has clinical features like mucosal bleeds, GI bleeds, or intracerebral bleeds. Coming to the diagnosis, platelet count is normal as clotting factors are deficient here. There is no abnormality in platelets per se. As discussed already, APTT is prolonged. Prothrombin time is normal as factors of the extrinsic pathway are not deficient. For detecting if antibodies are present against the clotting factors, a test known as the Bethesda assay is used. Also an important concept to learn here is about the mixing study, also known as the 50-50 study. In this study, we mix equal volume of the patient's plasma and pooled normal plasma. Now, when normal plasma is mixed with the patient's plasma, the APTT value will normalize as the deficient factors will be replenished. But patients in whom antibodies are present against the clotting factors, APTT will not normalize as these antibodies will also attack clotting factors in the normal plasma. Coming to the treatment of hemophilia, primary prophylaxis is aimed at maintaining factor levels in the range of more than 1%. Now let's learn how to calculate factor 8 deficiency. This is calculated by a formula which is target factor 8 minus baseline levels of the patient multiplied by body weight multiplied by 0.5. Similarly, factor 9 deficiency can be calculated with the same formula with the only exception that 0.5 in the formula is replaced by 1. Now let's learn this with an example. We usually use 50% as the target levels. Now suppose if the baseline level of the patient is 1%, we multiply this by the weight of the patient, which is 60 kgs for example, multiplied by 0.5. This comes up to 1500 units, which is 25 units per kg for this patient who is weighing 60 kgs. Cryo precipitate is used to replenish the clotting factors in severe bleeding. Non-transfusion therapy includes use of desmopressin and antifibrinolytic drugs like tranexamic acid. Coming to the complications, in some patients, long-term replenishment of the clotting factors leads to formation of antibodies against these factors. Now recall the diagnosis part. In these cases, the Bethesda assay is used for diagnosis and the mixing study. Thank you for watching this video. Do like the video and subscribe to the channel for more high yield topics. Follow us on Instagram at the rate official for learning one topic per day.